We're going to talk about inverse functions now. So think back to when we had um, the sine, sine of pi over 2. Uh, oh, not pi over 2, sorry. <laughs> We're going to make it pi over 6. Pi over 6 was equal to um, 1 half. So you might remember pi over 6 is a 30 degree angle. Sine of pi over 6 is going to be 1 half. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to say what is the inverse sign, and we use the inverse notation, the superscript of negative 1, to say inverse sign of, and now we're, they're going to give us this value, 1 half, and we have to come up with the angle, which is going to be pi over 6 in this case, okay? So in a regular sine function, they give you, we're taking the sine of an angle, and then we get some value. Now they're going to have the value, the inverse function of the value, and we're going to get um, the angle measurement. So we're kind of saying what value would, what angle would give me a sine of one half? All right. Now, because our uh, trigonometric functions are not one-to-one, -one, we have to restrict them so that uh, their inverses will be functions. And so for sine, inverse sine, sorry, inverse sine of x equaling y, we'll say, then the domain, think about, uh, you know, from lowest to highest, that x value has to be between um, negative 1, and 1 can be equal to. And then the y value, uh, did I just do that one? I did not. Okay, the y value, <laughs> that's where the restriction comes in, has to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And the reason for that um, is you've got to have, you want two quadrants that are consecutive. Um, it just, it's kind of arbitrary, but it's conventional to do it that way. It just is going to make it flow. It's going to be easier to do the graph in one piece. Um, and we're not going to graph these, but if you were graphing them, they show that in the book. Um, and you've got to have some negative values and some positive values to get um, all the domain values accounted for. Okay? So that's how sine works. Cosine, inverse cosine of x equaling y. So the um, x value, the domain, is going to be the same. So I should have written domain here. Range. Okay, so our domain here is going to be from negative 1 to 1. Um, and then the range, this time it goes from 0 to pi. And I always think of the picture so I think of, okay, I have positive and negative. So um, my x values are positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second quadrant. So I want those two quadrants um, to be the range. So if you think about what we know about inverses, uh, we know that a function and its inverse, the domains and ranges switch. So that's what's happening here. But unfortunately, we have to restrict the range. So I, you know what? I wrote that range in interval notation. Let me be consistent and make it the way I did the other one. The interval notation is fine, but it's going from 0 y. It's going from 0 to y. Okay. And then the inverse tangent. It also is restricted. Um, the domain is is not restricted. So you're going to have from negative infinity to infinity. But the range, so you think about you know, your graph, the picture of the tangent curve, the range values were from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, but the, uh, so the domain is that way here. The range is going to go from negative pi over 2. But it can't equal that. That's where the asymptote is, to pi over 2. So again, you can think about the picture being in the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. But you, you have to have some understanding that it can't equal 
uh, negative pi over 2 or pi over 2, because that's um, not going to be defined. Okay, inverse functions. So I didn't do a great job kind of explaining those, but uh, when we do the examples, you'll see some more.